Welcome to Beacon Church, a light to our neighborhood, a beacon set on a hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news in Antwerp and wherever he places us to live and work. We are here to demonstrate to others the good news of Jesus Christ, to restore life, rebuild community, and build up the body of the church in love so that all are actively involved in the task. Go, be fruitful, and multiply. Morning, church. Good morning to all your people at home. Uh, welcome to Beacon. So we've got, uh, if you're at home, get your communion things ready because we've got communion today, I believe. So it's not by accident that you're here today. God deliberately woke you up this morning. It's not about chance that he put breath in your lungs. And it's not by accident that he got you here without having an accident. He got you here for a reason, and that is to glorify his name. We're going to glorify God today. First, before I forget, because I usually do, I'm going to pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to be here today, to worship you today. Lord, I want to give this service to you, that everyone here will be filled with your spirit, Lord, that they will take with them what they, have, what they bring today. And today is your day. Today is the Lord's day, and we're going to give it to you. Every day is your day, Lord. But today, specifically, we come together as a body to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, we come here and we worship him, and some of us might have had terrible weeks. You know, you might have had a bad report from your doctor. You might be worried about redundancy. But we have this joy, this joy. And it's not dictated by our circumstances. It's dictated by Jesus Christ. The world didn't give us this joy, and this world cannot take it away. And even though things happen, we just smile, and we sing, and we clap. And the world just does not understand it. It's because we trust him. You know, Job thought God was going to kill him. I think it's Job chapter 13, verse 15. It says, though he may slay me, I will trust him. Because whatever happens to you, it's still in his plan. It's still part of his plan. And bad things will happen. But you've got to remember this. Nothing happens outside the will of God. It only happens for a reason. And if God permits it. I think it's is it Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. It says, weeping may last for the night, but joy will come in the morning. Joy will come in the morning. And we have this joy. And as I say, the world doesn't understand it. But that's down to us. We need to let them understand it. It's down to us to tell them about it. God, is, God could do it. It could just give them all a vision. But no, he's decided to use us as his agents, the agents of his gospel, the agents of his good news. So... I think Elaine's going to be speaking on that today. She's talking about, I am Andrew. I am Andrew. Andrew. It's, it's from the Greek word andreos. It means manly or strong, brave, courageous. And we can be all them things when we spread the gospel. Why? Why can we be that? Because God, Jesus himself, in Matthew 28, has promised to be with us. If we are obedient in spreading his word, he will be with us. He will be with us. What more could you want than that? that the creator of all things is with us as we go out into the world. So, without further ado, uh, I'd like to invite the worship team down. Is it Dion? And we're going to start praising him now. So, get your praise heads on <laughs> and get ready to worship. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As Chris said, get your praise heads on. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful morning it is. Amen. God has woken us up and brought us one more time into his house Amen. to praise him and to worship him. Why don't we stand this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, as it says here in Romans 12, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Amen. Amen. 
So let us offer up, as the word of God has told us this morning, uh, our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and pleasing to God. And as Chris said, that, you know, we're here only to glorify and to worship him. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do that this morning. So you need to get your hands ready, your tambourines, your flags, because we're going to glorify him this morning. He brought us through a week. Some of the week could be good. Some of it, as Chris said, could be bad. But we're here to glorify him and to honor him and to focus on him this morning. Amen. 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 Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Praise his holy name. Let the trumpet sound. Let the bells ring. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on and praise his holy name. Everybody, everybody sing. God is, God is holy and he's worthy. And we worship, we worship him. Glorify the Lord, glorify the Lord. Come on, let's praise Him. Praise His holy name. Oh, let the trumpet sound, let the bells ring. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on and praise His holy name. Everybody sing, everybody sing. God is, God is holy and He's worthy. And we worship, we worship Him. He is Lord. Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Beautiful one. Hallelujah. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. 
my hands to the coming king. Amen. To the great I am, to you I sing. my hands to the coming king to the great I am 
to you I sing, for you're the one who reigns within my heart. I lift my hands. Mm. I lift my hands. Well, come on, let's lift our hands to him this morning. To the coming King. To the great I am, to you I sing, oh, for you're the one who reigns within my heart. And I, and I will serve no great I am to you I sing for you're the one who reigns within my heart I lift my hands I lift my hands I lift my hands come on let's lift our hands to the coming King, oh, to the great I am. He's the great I am. To you I sing, for you're the one who reigns within my heart. And, and I will serve no fear and God. And I 
will serve. And I will serve no foreign God. Oh, or any other treasure. Come on, let's declare. You are my heart's desire. Your spirit, your spirit without measure. Unto, unto your name. I will bring my sacrifice unto your name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our voices to him this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we bring our sacrifice of praise and worship unto you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, as the song says, we will not serve no foreign God, oh God. Anything that we put before you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to we want to serve you in spirit and we want to serve you in truth this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. So as we sing our final song, Goodness of God, we're going to collect our offering. And we'll get, once you get your offering in your hand, we will, you can stand or sit, feel free. Um, but we're going to worship him this morning. Amen? Amen. And offering is part of our worship. <coughs> That's what we do to further the work of God's kingdom. Amen? Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good with every breath. I will sing 
of your goodness of God. Your goodness? Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you Just before we take our seats, I'd like to ask Kevin to come and pray for the offering for us this morning. Amen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the offering that people were able to give today. And if you didn't have to have money to give, that they, that you continue to bless them truly. Make make them make sure that the money and everything that we give, Lord Jesus, is to you, and that. You bless us all. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 You may take your seats. Well, if the Sunday club hadn't already left, which you think they might have done, it's time to go now. You know, it's, it is good to come and get here today and praise God like that. You know, the world thinks that Christians are self-righteous, but it's the opposite way around. Our righteousness is in Jesus Christ. Our righteousness is in Jesus Christ and not in ourselves, and we understand that. In fact, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're suffering from a disease, a disease called sin. It gives you the delusion that you're a good enough person. You're a good enough person. Uh, or it can make you compare yourself against, against other people. The problem is, you might think, oh, I'm better than him, you know, so. But the problem is, if you measure yourself against other people, you're using the wrong measuring stick. You need to compare yourself to Jesus Christ. That's your standard. That's your standard. And we need to remember what he did for us at Calvary. And with that, I'm going to ask Fran to come down and we're going to do the communion. Um, before we take communion, um, I'd like us to spend some time reflecting and recognising the gift of forgiveness that is offered to each of us. In Psalms chapter 32, verses 1 to 2, it says, Blessed is the person whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the person whose sin the Lord does not count against him and whose spirit is not in deceit. 
As humans, we are all sinful and it's in our nature. And there are many times that we sin um, and we do something that we know we shouldn't have done. The verse um, in Psalms uses the word um, transgression. And that means when you make a bad choice or when you do something wrong, when you know the line and yet you continue to cross it anyways. However, rather than to be separated from God by our transgressions and our sins, God offers a solution through his son, Jesus. His death on the cross is a provision for salvation and for the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness is a free gift that each and every one of us is offered by God. Through belief in Jesus and his power over death, we can experience and know this gift of forgiveness. God shows his forgiveness to each of us and forgiveness is a pardon, which is an act of mercy that's shown to us for our sin. And God saves those of us who ask for forgiveness from the final and the eternal punishment for sin. Forgiveness from God covers our sins. It puts it out of sight and it removes the power and the influence that it has over us. And forgiveness keeps God from counting each and every one of us guilty. It cancels and removes the debt of our sin and it strikes it from our personal record. This forgiveness is offered to us by the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This forgiveness is shown to believers. And as we take communion, we remember Jesus' death. We're obedient to his call where he tells us to eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance of him. And we also celebrate his victory over death and the forgiveness that those of us who know God and have a personal relationship with him are offered. Before we take the bread and drink the wine, I want each of us to have a moment to just consider the times where we have sinned, when we've known the right thing to do and yet done otherwise. Maybe we've done that this week. Or when we've chosen our own selfish desires rather than the will of God. In this time, if you are a believer in Jesus, begin to ask him for forgiveness and prepare yourselves to take communion. And if you're not a believer this morning, Still do use this time to consider the words that I've said and think about the forgiveness that God offers to you too if you believe in him and believe in his son. I'll just give us all a few minutes. Can ask the service to come. Okay. So we're about to take the bread. 
The bread is a symbol of Jesus's body, which was broken for us to complete the work of salvation. Jesus gave thanks for the bread and broke it, saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we eat, I'm just going to pray. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus and for his body, which went to the cross for us. We thank you for his death, which was not in vain, but a death and a resurrection that leads to salvation and the forgiveness of sins for all who believe. We thank you. Amen. So for those of you who are believers in Jesus Christ and are taking communion this morning, please take the bread as it comes around and eat it. If you're not a believer this morning, please just let the bread pass. Okay. and the wine. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and said, this is the cup, is a new covenant in my blood. Do this wherever you drink it in remembrance of me. And whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So let's pray for the wine before we take it. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus and his blood, which was poured out for our forgiveness. As we drink this cup, we proclaim his death and his resurrection, which is for the salvation and the forgiveness of sins for all who believe. We thank you. Amen. As the wine is passed around, if you who are taking communion this morning, if you take one and then hold it, and then we'll all drink together.
So let us all drink together, remembering Jesus' blood, which is poured out for each of us. Lord God Almighty, we thank you that we're able to celebrate Jesus' death and his resurrection, that we're able to celebrate that he offers us the gift of forgiveness to each and every one of us who asks for it. And I pray, Lord, that we would um, celebrate in that fact, celebrate in his death and celebrate in his gift of um, forgiveness. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. So as a communion corpse are being collected, Elaine can come down and get ready for what she's prepared. See what the Lord's put on our heart. Tim, before Elaine speaks, can I ask you to pray for her, please? Can I ask you to just pray for Elaine? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, your word, which teaches us how to live for you how to love you, how to give back to you and serve you because of all that you've done for us. And Lord, just ask that you'd help Elaine to, to speak your word this morning, that you would just bring from her lips the things that you've been saying, the things that you're saying to us this morning, that they will be clear. Um, as we've been singing, Lord, we want to surrender all to you. We want to follow you. So now show us from your word what that means. Uh, and how we can do that, how we can please you with our lives as, a, as that acceptable act of worship. Amen. Okay, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> wow, okay. <clears throat> excuse me. All right, I'm taking the opportunity. Actually, excuse me, I'm going to take my jacket. It's just really rather warm up here. So, I'm taking the um, opportunity today to speak to you um, about the Billy Graham um, Evangelistic Association's um, tour, well, an aspect of it. So they're coming in June. Um, and as part of the tour, which is called the God Loves You Tour, the association is using a strategy that they have used for years. So in their drive to encourage Christians to bring on believing friends and family to their events, they make use of the I am Andrew strategy. And um, Chris has already referred to uh, Andrew um, today. Actually, I can't remember which part of today you referred to him, but anyway, you referred to him. And uh, essentially, an Andrew is someone who brings someone else to where they can hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And believe it or not, the strategy began in 1954. So they must have used that strategy on the 23rd of June, 1967, when several young people from Calvary Church um, were taken, and I was a member of that, were taken to our, by our Sunday school teachers to a relay by a type of video link then. There was no YouTube. And um, it was at the old Bingley Hall. You know, the one that used to leak? I associate bottle green with it as well. Okay, it was then on Broad Street, 
on the site of what is now the um, ICC, International Convention Center, and Symphony Hall. So some of us became Christians, including me. So they must have used that strategy then. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so 57 years ago, almost, that was, and I'm still excited about the gospel and what Jesus has done in saving me. Why would I not thank God for every one of those 57 years? So the idea of I am Andrew actually began here in the UK. They didn't bring it with them from America. So during the preparations for um, that event, for that crusade in London in 1954, the team heard about a local church that was consistently reaching people with the gospel. The congregation were holding monthly events during which members brought friends who did not know the Lord. So that's the bringing aspect. So the team thought, oh, that's really good. And they adopted the idea and put their own things into it. Um, for their evangelistic events, for their crusades, and encourage Christians to pray for and to bring non-Christian friends and family to those events. So this approach is still used by the um, association today, and it's helped to ensure that those who become Christians will be discipled, that is, taught to become disciples, to learn to live for Christ in a local church, right? That's really important. And of course, there is this continuing need for evangelism. What is evangelism? Evangelism is taking deliberate steps to bring others to Christ. Individuals can do this. You can do this. I can do this. Churches can do this. Organizations can do this. Evangelism. And so in using the I am Andrew strategy, the goal of the association is to create opportunities for personal evangelism. It's not just all about what's going to happen in June. It's about you doing evangelism and about me doing evangelism on a wide scale. So the local church there in 1954 did evangelism in their area. However, the success of those events and any event, events that we do will have begun in the hearts of the Christians who were convinced of two things the necessity to obey the Lord Jesus, one. And secondly, number two, they were convinced of the necessity and transforming power of the gospel. Now, I'm looking at your faces and wondering, is this going in? All right, I hope so. It begins in our hearts. The necessity to obey the Lord and the necessity and transforming power. So the gospel is necessary. The necessity and transforming power of the gospel. So the obedience bit, well, Chris talked about it last week. Yeah, when he completed, he did. <laughs> All the week before, <laughs> you talked about it anyway. When we did the... Um, that last bit of Matthew. Yeah, it was the week before. Um, amazing, amazing book. Yeah. And we looked at it by focusing on the Great Commission. So in chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus tells the remaining 11 disciples to, and I quote, go and make disciples 
of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. It was a command, go. Yeah? Chris emphasized that because it was a command, it should be obeyed. Go and preach the gospel. It's as simple as that. So you just think, are you preaching the gospel with your words and with your life? Are you preaching the gospel? Am I preaching the gospel with my words? Jesus did this, da, da, da. And with my life, are they looking at me and thinking, she's a Christian? Okay. So the necessity and transforming power of the gospel. Before obeying the command to make disciples by sharing the gospel and by teaching what Jesus taught, we ourselves have to have experienced and know the transforming power of the gospel. I've got exclamation marks next to this here. You can't, in terms of Christian things, talk about what you have not experienced. Don't try it, because it doesn't work. The disciples had just been with Jesus for three years. They had spent time with him after the resurrection. They understood the joy of discovering the good news of Jesus Christ because they had lived it. Those of us who have been through the what is the gospel studies have been re-energized by the depth and wonder of the gospel for you, for me, for everyone else. So I'm going to give you a brief refresher. I will not make apologies for saying what the gospel is. Okay? So if you think, ah, here she goes again, here I go again. Okay? Because the only way for our evangelism to be successful is to know the Lord, to live it, and then preach it. You've got to know it, okay? Our God is the holy and righteous creator, our Father. He is the God who has to judge, who must and will judge, and will condemn our sinfulness. I'm so grateful to Frankie that this morning in communion, actually I was beginning to wonder Maybe I'd just better shut up, you know, because it was coming out that this God of ours put in place something amazing. He has to judge and condemn our sinfulness, our sinful nature, our rebellion against him because he is holy and righteous. Okay, our rebellion against him with all its dire consequences of physical death, spiritual death, broken relationships, broken relationship with God, broken relationship with others. The consequence of our sinful nature has driven a chasm. I was thinking a chasm as wide as Grand Canyon or wider than the Grand Canyon, but then I have no idea how wide the Grand Canyon is. <laughs> I just know it's a chasm. But it might as well be as wide as anything. It's driven this chasm between God and us, and it cannot be bridged. It cannot be um, crossed by anything that I can do or that you can do. Our sin has put this distance between God and us. However, thank God, he is not only a righteous judge who's going to condemn sin, 
but he is the God of compassion. He is the God who loved and loves each one of us still with every fiber of his being. You know, we tend to think of a phrase like that, every fiber, as having something to do with us human beings. But with everything that makes up the living God, he loves us. He loved us so much that he was prepared to pay the price in the only way which would satisfy his own holiness and righteousness. He sent Jesus, Jesus Christ, who is God and perfect in his holiness and righteousness to become man, his perfect and holy son, to die as a sacrifice which made it possible to deal with our state of sin and the consequences of it, the consequences, uh, consequences of our rebellion. Because of his overwhelming love for me and for you, God, our creator and father himself, made it possible through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of Jesus, his blood shed, as we celebrated this morning for sinful human beings, for you and for me, so that we would no longer be declared guilty of sin. Instead, he would see in us the righteousness and holiness bought by the blood of Jesus. So when, when God looks at Elaine, he doesn't see Elaine with that um, inbuilt sinful nature. He sees Jesus. And his righteousness. He would be able to, that's God, he would be able to accept us, accept me, into his presence and into his kingdom. And by defeating physical death through the resurrection of the man Jesus, God will welcome us into heaven. Tell me, isn't this good news? This is good news. So there is nothing we can do to bridge the chasm caused by our sin. The only way to cancel the guilt of our debt is to, as Frankie said, accept the sacrifice of Jesus. It is the only way to be able to have the right to stand in God's presence and not be condemned to eternal death and separation from this holy creator God. How wonderful it is to understand that God has taken the initiative on our behalf at his own cost by means of this amazing sacrifice. But, there's always a but, isn't there? However, we can only benefit from the sacrifice by accepting it. Acknowledging that it took place is not accepting it. <laughs> They're two completely different things. We can only accept it by being sorry for and repenting of our sin. <laughs> Frank is smiling at me. It can only, only, only be accepted by being sorry for and repenting of our rebellion, of our sin. By turning from that sin 
our sinful nature by turning from doing our own thing. That's what rebellion is. Doing our own thing and living just to please ourselves. We have to turn from that. And all the problems brought by living for ourselves, we have to, we, we can only deal with those by turning to God, as I've described. And we turn to God and ask for forgiveness. We accept Jesus. We accept what he has done by putting our faith, our absolute trust in Jesus and all that this sacrifice means. We accept it for ourselves personally just because mum and dad are Christians doesn't mean that we can be Christians. I was 13 when I became a Christian. There are people who are younger who have become Christians. There are people who have become Christians at the age of 80. I'm not there yet. But they become Christians. It doesn't matter your age. The only way is you yourself, me, myself, to accept this sacrifice. And then the possibility of life, of a life lived with the Holy God in charge, now becomes a reality. It's not going to be real without turning to him. The risen Lord Jesus can now live in us through his Holy Spirit. This means that our relationship with God is mended. As we come to know him better and better through prayer, his word, and the learning community, learning in the community of God's people, the church, so we will have more and more of his character. We will find that his promises to change us, to provide for us, and to deal with all of our circumstances are true. Those who feel condemned by the, the darkness of their life receive the freedom to live in a life filled with with the light of God. This is the power of the gospel. And this is good news. I just need to pause, okay? So those of you who have not yet accepted Jesus and have therefore not experienced the transforming power of the gospel have the opportunity now to respond to Jesus. I'm going to pray. Father, I pray for those who do not yet know you. Father, that they will know that it is possible to know you. Father, that there will be no doubt in their hearts that they can know God, that they can know you. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will uh, work in their hearts right now. to cause them to reach out to you and to accept what you have done for them. Father, those here, those online who are struggling with themselves because of sin, with their darkness because of that separation from you, Lord, speak to them as only you can. Take this word, O oh God. Use the power of it and bring them to that point of accepting Jesus. Help them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, 
we pray. Amen. If you are at that point, uh, come and see me at the end or come and see Tim, Chris. Come and see one of us. Okay. That is really good news. The news of the gospel, isn't it? Dion. Dion, please. Um, that song we sang, Glorified. We just have to sing that. Glorified, come. Glorified, glorified the name. Don't let me start it. <laughs> Just twice through. praising God for our salvation. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah? Okay, so if that is true, do we not want to share it? We want to share it. We have to share it. And then we'll all be there praising God because he is worthy. He is holy. And we will spend eternity worshipping him. So the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association says that becoming an, an <coughs> excuse me, becoming an Andrew begins in the heart. That is what I know. And I trust that that is what you know. Those who have been transformed and energized by the gospel want to spread the good news to those around them. So it's not just an act of obedience to the Great Commission, okay? 
but also because knowing the truth and what it has done for us, we want our family, friends, associates to accept Jesus too. We want to spread the good news. But why focus on Andrew? What was it you said, Chris? Um, Andrew means Andros. Brave, brave man. Yeah, okay. Well, actually, being an Andrew's got nothing to do with being brave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was just an ordinary person. And we hear of his actions only a few times. Um, unlike, for example, Peter or John or even Philip. Um, we don't hear of him preaching. He hasn't written a gospel. Well, yeah, he hasn't. We don't hear of him teaching. He wasn't famous. So that's like us. But what we do have about him is actually quite instructive. So we're going to read John chapter 1 and verses 35 to 42. So if we could have um, that up, please. <coughs> John chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed, him, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked, on him, looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Okay, so in verses 35 to 39, we see Andrew's growing faith in God. He was originally a disciple of John the Baptist, and he trusted John's teaching. So when um, John saw Jesus the day after his baptism and said, look, the Lamb of God, Andrew knew he was being pointed to the Messiah, God's answer to dealing finally with the sinful rebellion of the world. So consider this. He and his friend had spent time with Jesus. We don't know about his friend. But Andrew was so convinced about the truth of what Jesus must have said in that time they spent with him um, and what Jesus demonstrated in that time that the first thing he did was to find his brother Simon Peter and tell him and uh, I suppose we could add on to that the rest is history we know about Peter but his brother that we don't know much about was the one who brought him to to Jesus Uh, you can see in verses 41 and 42 um, about the Messiah there. The, the most important thing for a Jew was to know. Um, was, how should I put it? It was to have the belief in the Messiah promised by God. 
and Andrew had just met him. He believed he'd just met him. And that was good news, which he had to share with the person that he valued so much, was Simon Peter, his brother. He made it his priority to bring him to meet Jesus so that he could hear for himself. So if we have spent time getting to know Jesus, a result of that should be the desire to bring others to know him. Now, God most often uses relationships to bring people into a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, most often. He uses other things as well, other opportunities also. But usually, I think it's um, me talking to a friend, me talking to a family, um, or the people that are around us in one way or another, but not only so. Um, there was a time when uh, in 1 John, in, sorry, in John chapter 1, verses 43 to 40. I'm trying to miss out stuff here, which is why I'm just kind of getting a little bit <laughs> diverted. Mm. Okay, let's look at this. John chapter 12, verses uh, 20 to 22. John chapter 12, verses 20 to 22. Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. So this is the festival of Passover. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. So Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus So it looks as though um, Andrew and Philip were kind of like gatekeepers to Jesus. Um, you know, there were so many people clamoring to see him. But anyway, Andrew and Philip didn't think that these non-Jews, these Greeks, should be denied access to the Lord. So what am I trying to say to you? We need to examine our hearts. Are we denying friends, family, acquaintances, people we meet, access to the Lord that we have met? We bring people. Okay, let's just show you a video clip, please. Hope this is going to work. from the Billy Graham Evangelist Association about I am Andrew. It's only two minutes and about 10 seconds. It's not working. Oh, that's a shame. Never mind, not working. Let's give them another moment to see if they can do it. No, okay then, not a problem. Can we see the um, the pledge card? The video just simply said a lot of what I have said in terms of everybody, and it's in t you sitting and having a coffee with somebody, telling them about Jesus. Do you want to come? Yeah. Uh, are we getting any further? Okay. Can we have the second page of that? I was looking on there to see if it was there, but it wasn't because it's not on there, but it's here. <laughs> yeah? Can you scroll? Here we 
think he'd underwent a moment. While that's, um, oh, hey, that's it. Can you read it from where you are? Can we incre you can't increase the font? Okay, you can see the headlines of the, the different sections, though, can't you? So many of you have already taken this, whoops, this card from the back. I know because there aren't as many there as there were there before. And you may have been wondering quite what to do with it. Well, this is the I am Andrew um, card. And all it's trying to get you to do, firstly, is to pray for um, at least one person who needs Jesus. Okay? You're going to pray for that one person. You're going to ask God to open their heart and give you opportunities to share his love with them. And then it says, share there. That is, spend time with that person. You've prayed, you're going to spend time with that person. And this, this is a, a way that you can use anyway, isn't it? Not just when there's um, an event happening, but you can use it. Spend time with your friend. Um, it can deepen your friendship and create a chance to discuss Christ. And then begin to talk to your friend about attending the event. And then bring. Bring your friend to the event. And then if he or she responds to Christ or shows an interest in the gospel, they will need your encouragement. And then at the end there, it has follow-up. Invite them to church. This church would be very happy to, um, to have them, to work with them. Invite them to church with you. And then God can use you and the church to bring them into a deeper relationship. Take them on into um, knowing more and more about, about Jesus. So think about at least one person that you commit to praying for, sharing the gospel with, if at all possible, bring them to the event and then follow up with them, okay? If you had taken a card, there's a space at the bottom for you to write the name of the person. Yeah, so it can remind you, or persons, not just one. And um, at a later stage, um, Kevin will be talking to you about coaches for getting there. Um, and so on. That is to come. But whether you bring someone to the event or not, let's deliberately develop our personal evangelism. We deliberately pray for a and other. We deliberately um, spend time sharing with that person and doing whatever we can to bring them to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you will put into our hearts this energy to bring others to Jesus. Lord, if we've been lazy about this, convict us. If we've not seen the relevance of it, convict us of that. And Lord, as we have considered your gospel today, Put in our hearts that deep, deep desire to bring our family, friends, acquaintances, whoever, to know Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Technology, eh? that's why I never like to trust it. <laughs> Just, trust me, Bible, my Bible doesn't break down. You know, but it is important to spread the good news. People cannot save themselves, only God can do that. Remember when you were first saved? Someone had to go out of their way, someone had to seek you out. And that's what we are supposed to do. Remember the woman with the lost coin? She see, didn't did it for the lost coin all through the house, all through the house, because the coin hadn't lost its value. It just lost its purpose, its purpose. And God so loved the whole world, he gave his only son. Everybody has value to God, but you can only be saved if you come to God. And it's down to us to bring, you, bring people to him. So, as Elaine said, if you don't live it, don't preach it. If you don't walk the walk, don't talk the talk, because it doesn't look, it's not a good look. <laughs> but Elaine came out with some very, very strong um, things today, and I hope you are going to follow up and do what it said on the, on the thing, Br pray for someone, bring someone, take them to the event, and, you know, we need to disciple people. We need to encourage that discipline in their lives for Jesus Christ, because there's nothing we can do. We can't bridge that chasm. There's no way we can. It's like if someone came to me and says, you've been fined 10 billion pounds, there's no way I could pay that. But if someone came along and offered to pay it, there's no way I'd refuse that. But people are refusing Jesus Christ every day. He's offering to pay a debt that they cannot, and people refuse it, and just we just need to get that message across. Uh, so it's time for the notices, and who's doing the notices today? Is it you two? Pardon? Okay, um, hopefully there's not much to, to talk about this morning in notices. A uh, quick reminder that um, we are collecting for the food bank every Sunday. Please bring along what you can, even if it's not very much. It's really helpful. If we all bought a little something, then that really helps with uh, our outreach to our community to show God's love to them. Um, and there are a couple of events happening. So this coming Friday... Um, I'd love you to see a picture there. This is actually um, Mavis Cassell's daughter, Jennifer, for those who didn't know, um, is leading this event um, run by Sisters of Faith that Sisters of Strength are going to, I believe. So if you are interested in going on Friday evening, then um, please have a chat with Dion, get in touch with Dion, especially if you'd like a lift, then I'm, I'm sure she'll be able to help you to arrange one for you. Um, so there you go, that's down at... Um, well, it's, it's, it's been run at the Rock. I presume that uh, Brookfield Life Development Centre is attached to the Rock. Okay, if you're going, then could you have a chat with Myrtle? And she'll pass on the details, yeah. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah. Another event, but this event is here. On the 5th of May, we have a youth service, which our young people will be involved with. And um, Matthew Morrison, who's from the Life and Light Fellowship around the corner, will be speaking there. Um, so please, please put that in your diary. And if you are in connection with any young people, encourage them to come. Um, encourage them to come and, and hear what Matthew's got to say, but also to, um, to really get involved with the service that our young people are leading. Uh, it should be a great encouragement for everybody. Um, and... Just a, a quick reminder here of what Elaine has been saying, and we'll be hearing more details about how you can get to the God Loves You event on the 15th of June. It's still some distance away, but we will want to um, to try and get organised before then. Um, and uh, Edwina is uh, organising a 12 plus event for this Friday, which is um, skating. I believe it's skating this Friday. Yeah, they're going. They're going skating. But this is not ice skating, but roller, roller skating, rollerblading. Um, please see Edwina if you're interested in going. Um, for those that have already expressed that interest to her, then um, you'll be leaving here at 6 o'clock on Friday. Is there any more details, uh, Veronica, on that? On that one? Mm. No. No. 
Okay, that's great. Um, I'd also like to make a, um, a request um, on behalf of the Beacon Centre project. If there's anybody who is good with um, organising information uh, and, and putting it down on paper, we would like to try and work out how many volunteer hours people in our church put in over a typical week. And I would like some help to do that, <laughs> please, if anyone is willing to do some research and add it all up and, and write it all down, document it in a way that we can prove and show um, what is done. Because people do so much for the church, and I know that that will be a great, make a great impression on grant makers as we go to look for grants for our Beacon Centre project. Um, but I could do with some help. Anyone's interested, just come and see me now after the service and let me know. And we'll work that out. Veronica, anything else? I don't know what to say to you. But, um, I think you've done it all. But just to say, um, if you're going to Sisters of Strength on Friday, it's see Myrtle. Give your names to Myrtle. Um, and if you're if you need a lift, it's to be here for seven p.m. Isn't it? Yeah, leaving from here at seven p.m. If you need a lift to go to the um, the Sisters of Strength, who are going to join some other sisters. Um, for a session on Friday, yeah? So I think Tim has said all the other things, if he's gone according to the, yeah? Happy birthday, Sister Ruth, this week. Happy birthday, Sister Stacia, this week. Big, big birthday, yeah? Uh, Lydia's not here. But anybody else who's having a birthday this week, hope you have a lovely day, a lovely time. What did you say about Sister Gaynor? Uh, just to, for those who, who might not be aware, but uh, Sister Gaynor, um, her son, one of her sons died um, last week. Um, it's her eldest son who lives in London. Um, so if you could be aware of that and uh, perhaps give a call. Um, she's still at her daughter-in-law's house. So um, if you wanted to call, call Andrea and Trevor um, and just let Sister Gaynor know that you're thinking about her. Yeah? So, yeah, I think that's all the notices that we had. Um, young people, they're not in here. Yeah, our service um, is in about two weeks' time. So um, we have got some volunteers, but if there's anybody else who thinks, yeah, I'd like to do that, or could we do that, but I don't want to do it myself, but could we do that, please come and have a word with myself, um, and we'll see what we can do about that. Yeah? I think that's all the notices that we have. Have a good day, everybody. God bless you.